हेलो डियर स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम वंस अगेन टू आर जे डब्ल्यू एडवांस ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी थ्री प्रिपरेशन एट दैट सेट यूट्यूब चैनल सो वी हैव फिनिश सक्सेसफुली द फिजिकल जनरल ऑर्गेनिक केमिस्ट्री डिस्कशंस सो आई होप यू हैव लर्न दी कॉन्सेप्ट थ्रू दी पी वाई क्यूज आई ट्राई टू गिव यू दी सिंपलेस्ट सोल्यूशन दैट आर पॉसिबल फॉर दीज क्वेश्चन ना दिस इज द टाइम फॉर अस टू रिवाइज द इन ऑर्गेनिक केमिस्ट्री एज वेल as you know that you are going to write the examination on 4th of june 2023 you must understand that the chapters from inorganic chemistry which are little bit memory oriented has to be thoroughly revised during this lag hours of the preparation because you know that the reactions the reagents or the colors or uh, the Uh, magnetic properties uh, certain properties of these inorganic substances or reactions of these inorganic substances are little bit memory oriented now since you are writing the jw examination in the coming very few days you should revise the inorganic or memory component now not only that you have to write or check out the list of the compounds which are having or exhibiting different colors you must also write the properties of uh, some of the complexes as well for example you have to focus more on the werner theory werner uh, uh, formula of the given complex you have to also focus upon the crystal field stabilization energy ellingham diagram the basic extraction principle uh, in metallurgy and a certain group reagents in the salt analysis so you revise these chapters frequently you emphasize mostly upon periodic properties chemical bonding isn't it then salt analysis metallurgy coordination compounds these five chapters will help you to easily score the maximum marks from inorganic chemistry so we are going to start inorganic chemistry learning now so let's start with uh, the first question of the day today we are going to cover the questions from s block elements hydrogen and two of the p block element that is third group and fourth group that means i am taking here the 11th syllabus into consideration all right you can see the first question you can see that what's happening over here when these two react you must write the product of the reaction you know that your oh minus is going to abstract a proton here isn't it now you are going to get what the carbon ion <coughs> now once carbon ion is formed you know it's going to stay with the calcium because magnesium loves to be with the oxygen because of size similarities isn't it so magnesium is closer in size with the oxygen hence you must write the associative product isn't it now you know that the peroxide this is not superoxide this is peroxide simply hydrogen peroxide is obtained out of the reaction between these two and this is also the same logic right magnesium would prefer to be with the oxygen like lithium this is the product of the reaction and uh, here also you will be writing what barium chloride and h2o2 i'm not balancing here isn't it now we can see that this is the removal of the hardness you have studied isn't it so the reaction that happens here gives rise to what cacio3 and water so these are all the product of the reaction you can see that h2o2 is formed in which two reactions you know i am taking one by one into consideration right you can see that h2o2 is formed in q isn't it so you can see only one option is matching so you have the b and c ruled out because one is matching with what q we are talking about the formation of hydrogen peroxide isn't it so you can see that one is matching with q so there are two option to be considered then you have magnesium hydroxide you can see magnesium hydroxide 2 is formed in r as well as p isn't it so we have not come to the we can see that 2 is formed in r as well as p so we cannot come to the conclusion based on 2 as well right you have to move on to the third you can see third is barium chloride barium chloride is obtained in s of course in both the options it is given as s so you cannot come to the conclusion so everything has to be determined in 
this fourth uh, compound that is calcium carbonate right you can see calcium carbonate is formed at which reaction is it r no you can see that in r you have not obtained you can see that you have obtained in p so right answer for this question is just based on the fourth uh, compound matching is option d isn't it let's see the next question the electrochemical extraction of aluminium from bauxite ore involves we are talking about electrochemical extraction where you know that aluminium plus 3 is reduced at the cathode to give you aluminium so aluminium is deposited isn't it you can see that the reaction of al2o3 with coke about 2500 degree celsius is possible according to the ellingham diagram right this we study in ellingham diagram as per that this is correct but the point is this is not electrochemical extraction this is a normal smelting process or carbon reduction method which will not be covered over here you can see the neutralization of aluminate you know that aluminate that is uh, alo3 minus when formed you know that it's going to make the solution alkaline okay so the solution becomes what alkaline and the neutralization is done by passing some acid through it that is nothing but h2co3 or carbon dioxide so this option seems to be okay the dissolution of al2o3 in hot aqueous yields you know that al2o3 dissolves in hot aqueous NaOH you have studied sodium meta aluminate NaAlO2 sorry over here also AlO2 minus all right NaAlO2 plus H2 gas if it is fused so that dissolves right so dissolution is correct the electrolysis of al2o3 mixed with the uh, yes uh, what will happen here that this is the co-electrolyte isn't it so the purpose of co-electrolyte is to decrease the melting point of the electrolyte and increase the conductance to give aluminium and carbon dioxide you know that this al plus 3 anyways you have obtained this aluminium at cathode that we know what about the carbon dioxide which is obtained what will happen here that at anode you see I am writing it here at anode you should know the reaction that is going to take place you know that the oxide ion in Al2O3 undergoes the oxidation to give you oxygen gas which will react with the carbon anode you know that you will be taking carbon as the anode to give you what the CO2 gas so this is also absolutely correct so right answer for this question is B C and D option A is also correct but that is not electrochemical extraction isn't it <coughs> let's see the next question a little bit easier one which of the following you can see option A says that iron when reacts with HNO3 you should know the reactions of uh, what you call HNO3 you must study that thoroughly NO2 and water uh, then B also gives rise to similar products you should know that zinc when dissolved in NaOH you can see that you will be getting sodium zincate along with that hydrogen gas you must know that zinc is getting oxidized so something must be reduced so hydrogen gets reduced to so this is how we can make sure that hydrogen gas is evolved in this process so zinc with NaOH is the right answer and what about the option D you can see that uh, gold is reacting with sodium cyanide in presence of air that is O2 and H2O to give you what NaAuCN taken twice isn't it so you can see that gold got oxidized from 0 to plus 1 and anyways oxygen gets reduced so it will be forming what you call water or it will be forming uh, cyanide is involved water I don't think so that we require 
to produce here water yes if you write water also it doesn't make any difference uh, aqueous solution yes it is aqueous solution so you need to write water here so the product obtained is NaOH so you can see that here how to make sure that you got hydrogen gas or not you can see that gold got oxidized and oxygen got reduced that's all right there is no point that you know uh, hydrogen will be reduced from uh, water right you know there is no point that you will be getting H2 gas over here so you can see that there is only one option which is matching to this question that is option C alright so there is a method which I repeatedly refer to these type of question so when you take TEBR6 minus 2 you have to find out the n by 2 value of the central atom tellurium valence electrons you know that oxygen sulfur selenium tellurium polonium sixth group plus halogens attached minus of minus charge by 2 so this is the easiest way to find out the number of lone pairs you know you can see that 14 by 2 that is 7 after that you have to subtract the number of uh, atom that are attached to it so that you can get the lone pairs do that in all the cases isn't it br f2 plus so you have to find out the n by 2 of the central atom central atom is bromine balance electrons of bromine 7th group plus 2 halogens are attached minus of charge by 2 so this is turning out to be 8 by 2 that is 4 minus you must see how many atoms are attached to it like you have subtracted 6 from here so you have to see how many atoms are attached that is 2 atoms are attached that means lone pairs are 2 here next you can take the next example that is <clears throat> I'll take the last one because with this formula you can find out the last one but not the middle one so you can take n by 2 of the xenon valence electrons of xenon are 8th group plus halogens are 3 minus of minus plus 1 by 2 so this is turning out to be 12 by 2 that is 6 minus 3 atoms are attached you can see 3 atoms are attached over here so 3 lone pairs are obtained and finally when you want to sum it up you can see that you have got one more substance left whose structure need to be known right you know NF3 alright and this nitrogen has a lone pair which had been donated to the empty orbitals of the sulfur because you know that sulfur has six electrons in the balance so there is no lone pair left on nitrogen in the third compound all right so three plus two that is five plus one six is the total number of electrons all put together okay very important technique i have released one video on this also right one minute short video please follow it now you see <clears throat> the reaction of uh, lead nitrate with NaCl gives rise to double displacement reaction you know that PbCl2 is soluble in hot water right that means it is <coughs> insoluble in cold water however when you are adding excess of HCl you will be getting H2 PbCl4 so this is what is making it soluble so right answer for this question will be option C this is a regularly asked question so go through carefully very easy question as well right now let's see the so let's see the next question you can see here that uh, which of the following liberates oxygen gas upon hydrolysis that is reaction with water you know that this PB3O4 is insoluble in water so there is no point that this will react isn't it now you know that Na2O2 when undergo hydrolysis gives rise to what NaOH and H2O2 alright and you know that lithium peroxide gives rise to what lithium hydroxide and H2 gas is a what isn't it However, when KO2 reacts, that is superoxide, where the oxidation state of oxygen is minus 1 by 2, when this reacts with uh, H2O, the products obtained are KOH anyways, H2O2 and oxygen gas. Yes. You need to know that here oxygen changing from minus 1 by 2 to minus 1 as well as 0. So this oxide is remaining intact here. So you can see minus 1 by 2 to minus 1 is reduction and that itself is undergoing oxidation to give you 
the oxygen gas. So only one substance which is giving rise to the oxygen upon hydrolysis is potassium superoxide. Very frequently asked question. The superoxides give rise to the extra oxygen because it has extra oxygen. That's what called superoxide, isn't it? So which among the following statement are true for the extraction of aluminium from bauxite? You have to focus on bauxite, the structure of diborane and uh, the uh, what you call the structure of uh, inorganic benzene, the acidic strength of boron trihalides. Because these are all the frequently asked question like you know that addition of Na3 because you know this is coelectrolyte which I discussed in the beginning questions also. So used to lower the melting point and increase the conductance. CO is evolved at the anode you have seen that the carbon reacts with the oxygen evolved at the anode to give you CO2 and the cathode is steel vessel with lining of the carbon yes this is the absolute fundamental and hydrated Al2O3 precipitates when CO2 is bubbled through the solution of sodium aluminate yes that's true because the purpose of adding the CO2 is nothing but the neutralization of the solution and also the precipitation of the Al2O3 so this we study as the fundamentals of the electrolysis of the bauxite so all the options are correct here go through it's in your NCRT textbook very important very frequently asked which of the following statement you know that tin is stable as plus 4 lead is stable as plus 2 because of inert pair effect so this is a very strong reducing agent we have seen in multiple reactions like you know HgCl2 reacts with SnCl2 to give you Hg2Cl2 and SnCl4 etc very frequently seen because the oxidation state of tin is stable as plus 4 lead is stable as plus 2 due to inert pair effect and next is what this is true all right so SnO2 reacts with KOH yes this is absolutely correct give rise to K2 SnOH taken 6 this is also correct all right what else we have you can see here the only point is you have to understand that here the oxidation state is plus 4 and here the complexation is taking place where the oxidation state of tin remains as plus 4 that's all right you know complexation this is not a redox reaction this could be a redox reaction provided this reagent is an oxidizing agent but we know that this is not an oxidizing agent hence this cannot be the redox reaction where there is the tin remains as plus 4 only next you can see option C solution of PBCl2 we have discussed this another question was also asked when added to this thing so you will be getting what 2 moles of H plus and PBCl4 minus 2 so these are the ions that are obtained but not PB uh, plus 2 and Cl minus so this is a wrong statement and you can see um, PB3O4 I told you that you need to consider this as 2 PBO and PBO2 dilute HNO3 what is that you are adding here dilute HNO3 so you can see that uh, dilute nitric acid hot dilute nitric acid to give PBO2 in the redox reaction that means here I, uh, lead got oxidized so you got PBO2 so let's see the possibility isn't it instead of remembering so PBO2 the oxidation state has changed all right because you know that this is oxidizing agent so there is a possibility it's not that it won't happen so there is a possibility that it will happen along with that you are using this so the product may be N2O and water I am not sure about this product that depends upon this dilute if you take you will be getting however hot might what you call make it further undergo the oxidation to give you NO or NO2 also so let's not focus on this let's understand that yes it will form PBO2 a stable compound of lead when oxidized by using HNO3 now mm, you can see the green color produced in the borax beat test of chromium salt is you know borax beat test borax is heated so that it loses water first because it is efflorescent loses water upon heating this upon further heating you know that you will be getting a glassy mass that is bead and out of which B2O3 by nature is acidic it's going to react with the basic oxides of the transition metals to give you a salt 
and depending upon the element here different colors are obtained you know that copper has blue chromium has green etc so this clearly says that the option d is the right answer for this question so we are going to discuss uh, so many such type of interesting question by inculcating some logic into inorganic chemistry instead of only putting forth the memory aspect right so keep watching these videos if you are liking please press the like button share and subscribe to our youtube channel that's it for today i'm going to discuss more questions in the coming classes until then take care